Well, hello. Welcome to Tuesday night prayer. We're, um, this is our night of prayer, and uh, we're happy to have you watching. And uh, this is going to be a great night, and I think this is an important time for us to be praying together. And um, if you didn't hear me on Sunday, we're just going to keep this prayer thing going. Originally, we were just praying leading up to the elections, but with all that's going on continually right now, we just believe that um, uh, we got to pray for God's hand to be upon this nation, mm -hmm. God's hand to be involved in, in unity and bringing people together. And, um, and I think today, I think today's teaching is going to help us a lot because we're going to be talking about the, the armor of God. And we're talking about spiritual warfare. And if, there, if there's ever been a time where spiritual warfare is needed, it's now. That's right. And um, so we're thankful that you joined us. And uh, we're just going to encourage you as, please, first off, let us know that you're there. And uh, let us know that you're joining in. And at the same time, if you have a prayer request, at the end, after the teaching part, um, we, get, we pray for your prayer request. Please let us know, um, and we'll be praying for you, and we'll, any other requests, if you, have a, if you want to pray for this nation, let us know. If you want us to pray for a personal need, let us know. And plus, let each other know, like as someone posts a request, let them know that you're praying for them, and we'll just pray this thing through together. Right. Um, so Josie, who do we have who's watching right now? Let's see, we have um, your sister is watching, Debbie Holmes is watching from hey, Virginia, Debbie. and your parents are both watching Mom from South Carolina. Um, the wonderful Cheryl Zahura is watching. Oh, my Thank you for sharing your husband tonight as our <laughs> camera guy. We appreciate it, Cheryl. Sorry, Cheryl, we stole him. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Uh, Dottie Covington is here. Bobby Nelson's watching. Gary Hutman's on tonight. Annie Graham is watching. Paulette is on, and... Uh, Let's see, Anne and Angela, Rena, Mary, we've got wow. all kinds of people on tonight. Thank you all. Thanks for joining. And like I said, let us know any prayers that you, uh, prayer requests that you have. Um, we're going to start off in prayer, and uh, we're just going to turn this whole evening over to the Lord right from the start. Um, and, but before we do start, I do want to say this. Uh, our teaching tonight is coming from this book, Deepening Your Prayer Life. Um, it's by Charles Stanley. Can't go, can't go wrong if you're using Charles Stanley stuff. <laughs> and um, I have found it very um, beneficial in my life. And if you want to purchase that book, uh, you can. And uh, just go online. I think it's available for like $10, but a really good book, and it'll strengthen your prayer life. But let's, let's just go to the Lord together in prayer. Um, Lord, we thank you for this night where we can come together. Even though we're not here physically with everyone, Lord, we're here spiritually with them. And you are uniting us together with those who are watching online. And I pray this night, Lord, that you would minister to your people. And Lord, as we come to you um, in prayer, and as we come to you in the teaching, that, that God, that you would strengthen our prayer life, but also you would reveal to us the authority and the power that we have in, in prayer. Lord, that we're not defenseless, we're not helpless in any way, but Lord, you have given us weapons, and you've given us weapons to use in prayer, and Lord, they're not just defensive, but Lord, you have given us a mighty, powerful, offensive weapon, the Word of God, that we can use and we are supposed to use in prayer. So Lord, I pray you strengthen us tonight, Lord. Give us that boldness, give us that power. And Lord, we give this night to you, this is yours, minister to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as we go into this discussion in, in prayer, um, we just want you to know that you have authority in prayer, that there is an enemy. He's, he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. So you have an enemy, but you have authority over that enemy. And... Um, there is um, a scripture in Ephesians 6.10 that we're going to start with. And it says, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him. The emphasis there is your union with him. That you are united with Christ. 
And it says, and in the power of his boundless might. Now, if you've got boundless might, then no one can steal that strength from you. That's right. So um, all of us are going to have times of opposition. All of us are going to have times where the enemy comes at us. There's going to be times where we're going to the Lord in prayer. And um, um, Josie, what was it you were going to um, tell well, us about prayer? Uh, when you begin to pray with power, when, when your prayer life deepens and, and you realize that you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you, to pray through you, to pray through the things that you're praying for, then the enemy will come at you and say, well, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Why do you think that you're going to get that prayer answered? You've messed up before. I've seen you do what you're praying against. Yeah. Who do you think you are? And, and we have to remember in that, in that verse, Ephesians 6.10, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him, and be empowered through your union with mm. him. So it has nothing to do with your own power, has nothing to do with what you can do with your situation. It has to do with being united. Yeah. Be empowered through your union with him. It has to do with being united with Christ and the power you get from him. Has the enemy ever said that to you? Who do you <laughs> think you are when you go to pray? Yeah, definitely. He brings up all the past. Yeah. Uh, he brings up all the things that um, you've, and for me, one of the hardest things for me is maybe he'll bring up all the things that I've prayed for that didn't get the result that I thought it would get. That's good and one. so I pray for healing and, yeah. and it didn't come. Yeah. And so then if I pray for healing again for somebody that I love, right then he's going to bring it up and say, hey, the last time you prayed for that, it didn't mm. happen. That person was still sick or that person passed away. And, and so who do you think you are that you think that God's going to answer the prayer this time? Mm. So we didn't go over this, but um, at what point do you give up in prayer? <laughs> you don't. You no keep point. going. That's right. You, you, you ask your husband, why is this still <laughs> happening? He and, he tell, and he tells you don't give up. <laughs> um, and I want to say that, I just felt like that when you were saying that, if you're at home and you're watching, that um, if you are at a point where, I mean, you could even talk about the, the whole election, or you could talk about current circumstances in your home, or you could talk about your health, or you could talk about your finances, and you say, you could be asking the question, God, why haven't you answered me like I wanted you to? God, why didn't you come through in this? And, and what I want to say to you is take your natural a vision off and get some spiritual vision. Mm -hmm. take, turn away from what you think should happen and turn it over to God. And say, God, I, I expect this to happen. And just throw that out and say, God, I humble myself. And I realize that you, your ways are higher than my ways. Your thoughts are greater than my thoughts. And so the only thing I know to do in those times is pray the will of God. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, there, if you're watching this and you know how to pray in the Spirit, let me say this. Pray in the Spirit because you're praying the perfect will of God. And, and you're praying for His will to be done. And you're taking your flesh out of it. And so many times our flesh messes us up. Right. Our flesh is uh, confusing us. And sometimes your mind will confuse you. And um, when we were thinking, uh, when we were talking in advance about this, I thought of this illustration. And... Because he says, be strong in the Lord and be empowered through your union with him. And I hope you enjoy that I like using the Amplified a whole lot now because <laughs> I'm just going to keep using it. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. But uh, the, it really breaks it out. You are empowered by your union with him. So when the enemy comes at you, when the enemy uh, starts speaking lies to you and say, who do you think you are? What do you say then? What do you pray then? We pray the promises of God. I am mm. a child yeah. of God. I am a daughter of the King. And these are the promises that he gave me in his word. And he then, promises to fulfill them. When you say that, what you're doing is you're speaking the word of God. Mm -hmm. With authority. With authority. And you are saying who you are. So I thought of this um, there a, a number of years ago 
way, way in my past. Um, I was pulled over by a cop. Well, actually, what was happening is I was driving to church, and I was late. It was actually when I was a youth pastor, and I was late coming to church. Now, in the car was Zachary with me, and, uh, and so I, I had to teach that night, and I'm speeding across town, and I'm actually on Woodward Avenue, and I'm headed here. I'm very close. I'm within miles of the church, but I, I blew a stop sign. I've already repented, don't worry. <laughs> I blew a stop. I went, I'm flying here. And, and, uh, and all of a sudden, I see the lights. Woo, woo. You know, the cops behind me. I'm like, oh, no. And, and, and I pulled over. The cop gets out of his car. He comes up alongside of my car. And I, I didn't have to even show him my ID yet. But as he came up, I knew I was getting my ID out. As he came up to my car... Um, I, I had the window down. I said, officer, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I said, please do what you have, whatever you have to do. But I know he, he asked, always asked that question. Do you know why you're stopped? Of course I know why I stopped. I'm like, I, I'll tell you every, well, actually, I'll tell you a few of the reasons. I don't want to tell him all the reasons because then I'll get extra tickets. But I just said, all right, yeah, I was speeding, officer, and, and I blew through that stop sign. Um, we'll just stop there. And, and he, he asked the question, though. He said, why were you going through that stop sign? And I said, I didn't mean to. I said, but, but um, I'm actually late for church, and I'm teaching tonight. <laughs> I said, I'm a pastor. I said, I'm really, really sorry. I'm the pastor at the church down the street. What church? Life Point Community Church. So I'm telling him who I am, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm sorry. I know what I did. I'm wrong. I actually said those words to him more than once. I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. Please just dish it out and let me get on. And, and he looked at me. I think he was shocked that I'm saying I'm wrong. In, me, in my mind, that's my form of repentance. I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I repent. I'm, I won't ever do it again, officer. And, and um, he asked me for my ID. And so I pull out my ID. And here's my Florida license. And I pull out my ID and I show it to him. And I use this whole analogy for this. Is that when Satan comes to you and pulls you over and says, I see what you did wrong. Who do you think you are calling yourself a pastor, a child of God? You have no authority here. But my authority isn't based on who I am. All of us here, you watching on the other side of the screen, you're going to fail. There's times when you're going to fail. But when you confess and repent, it can happen in a second. It can happen in a minute. Your Savior, who paid an incredible price for your salvation, but he also paid an incredible price for your authority and your power, restores you. And... When you turn from your sin and turn to him, he hands you back your power and your authority. Mm -hmm. And so it's like showing your ID and saying, this is who I am. But on your ID, it says exactly what you said, a child of God, covered in the blood of Jesus. He sees that you're clothed in righteousness. And he goes to look at your identification. That is your ID who you are as a child of God. And he looks at your identification and he says, wow, righteous. There's, there's, not, a, there's not a spot here. There, there's, not a, there's not a failure here. There's not a mistake. And so many times we beat ourselves up based on our failures and, and that you don't have to because Jesus restores you. And don't ever let the enemy take from you what you've been given you can still go right into the throne room, throne room of God, even with, with your failures. And, and yes, you do have to repent. I believe in repentance. I believe in turning. But, but it's, you don't have to spend the next three days repenting. <laughs> That's, right. That's called guilt. It's not of God. It's from the enemy. And so you repent. I'm sorry, I messed up. Just like I did to that cop. I'm sorry. Please dish it out. And the cop looked at me and he goes, Go ahead, sir. Please don't do it again. He said, get, get to your class. And I, I was so shocked at the time. I was like, you mean you're not, you're not going to give me a ticket? He's like, no, nah, go ahead. And I was like, woohoo, and I sped off now. <laughs> 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 and, and 
I went on and completely free. Didn't even give me a ticket for whatever reason. Became a joke with, between me and Zach for a long time. But a lot of times when we get pulled over by the enemy and he starts pointing out what we did wrong, we fall into this place of almost like helplessness where we're like, oh, I don't have the authority to pray that. I don't have the, the um, power to pray like that. And I want you to remove all that thinking because Jesus says, yes, you do have authority. Once you repent, once you confess, once you turn to him, he restores everything the enemy has stolen and says, continue on, my son or daughter. Continue on. Continue to pray. Continue to be bold. Con- continue to be strong in the Lord. And so what does Ephesians 6, 11 say, Joseph? It says, put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed mm. soldier. That's what the enemy sees when he sees you. The full armor. It says, the splendid armor of a heavenly armed soldier. Do you feel like that right now? That's what you are. You are tough. You are brutal. So take it at the enemy, okay? Keep going. So that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. So there's his strategies. There's his, de- his deceit. There's his schemes. He's scheming. He's strategizing against you. That's his job. That's what he... Know your enemy and know what his job is because it helps you to know what your job is. And the word there, which is in parentheses, says successfully. You may be able to successfully stand up against him. That is what you are called to do by God. That's what Jesus has purchased for you, to be someone who successfully, a child of God who successfully stands up against the enemy and tells him he's a loser. Right now, in your home, go ahead. Tell the enemy you're a loser. I know your strategy's not going to work this time. (laughs) Go ahead and read verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against mm. the world forces of this present darkness, yes. against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Man, so, so in that you will see that your enemy is not a person. Um, many times in conflict, and when we have conflict, when we have struggles, we turn the you know, those who are closest to us, or, or I should say this, those who prevent us from uh, accomplishing what we think we should be able to accomplish, we make them the enemy. And this is a spiritual battle. It's not a, a person. And right now, the enemy's really good at dividing brothers and sisters in Christ based on what political party you are with. Right. He's so good at it, turning you against a brother or sister in Christ because, oh, you voted for this person or you voted for that person. And we got to realize that there is a real spiritual battle going on right now. And it's far greater than what's going on in politics right now. Mm -hmm. But the enemy knows if he can divide you, he's got you. So we need to clean our hearts out right now And we need to strengthen our brothers and sisters in Christ, not tear them down and not uh, speak evil against them. And go on to uh, Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. And I like that it said the, the complete armor of God. And that, that's what helps you to successfully stand. Mm-hmm. And then he says, uh, the Apostle Paul says something here. And he does it in verse 13 and verse 14. He finishes in 14. But um, there are three types, and this is on, you'll see it on the screen. There are three types of standing that he mentions. And it starts in verse 13. And he says this, he says, number one, to stand. He uses the word stand. Um, So that's getting up from sitting down position. So first you stand, then you withstand. 
In other words, you're taking a hit. The enemy's going to come at you. The enemy's going to hit you. Some of you right now, the enemy has hit you in, in, in your mind. The enemy has discouraged you in your mind. The enemy has, has hit you hard enough where he's trying to steal your faith. He's trying to steal your joy. He's trying to steal your peace. And so he's coming at you. He's hitting you. And what you need to do is you got to have the word of God on hand and come back at him. Withstand the hits. Take the hits and then stand firm, which is a push back. So first you stand up. You let him know who you are as a child of God. Then you withstand that hit, the hit that he, because of the hit that he's coming at you, you already know he's scheming, he's strategizing, he's got tactics against you. So you're like, that's nothing. I knew you were coming at me with, with that. Oh, yeah, that, sure, I did that, you know, a few years ago. Or oh, wait a minute, sure, I did that um, last week. <laughs> a few hours ago. <laughs> yeah, but I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, and this is who God says I am. No weapon, no weapon you're coming at me with. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then it says, stand firm, which means to push back. So you push back against the strategies, push back against the, the hits, the blows of the enemy. All of us are going to get hit. I have this coffee cup. I wish I, I thought <laughs> to bring it with me. Uh, I'm a big, um, probably because I grew up, in South Jersey and close uh, very close to Philadelphia. And um, in, in the Rocky movies are very big um, and because it was filmed in, in Philadelphia. And I got this coffee cup. And in one of the Rocky movies, it was actually the Creed movie, um, it, it says something like, on, and it says it on this coffee cup, it's, it's not about how hard um, you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Um, Rocky quotes are like the best quotes. I thought Rocky <laughs> quotes are just after the Bible is a good Rocky, <laughs> a Rocky quote. But, uh, but um, and, and when you're in, um, if you live in that area, like Philadelphia area, it's not, he's not Sylvester Stallone. He is actually Rocky Balboa. <laughs> <laughs> People really believe like he's the real deal. But, um, but it's, it's not, you know, there are times which you gotta, you gotta hit, but there's times where you're gonna get hit and you gotta keep moving forward. There's times where you're gonna fail and you keep moving forward in Christ. And um, so to, with, to withstand, you gotta be able to, to take a hit, but you also gotta keep moving forward forward and, and stand firm against the attacks of the enemy against you. And um, which way? Did you read verse 14 and 15? Did you no. already do that one? No, not yet. Okay, so, so listen to this as she, in Ephesians 6, 14 and 15, continuing on in that scripture. It says, so stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage, around your waist, mm. and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. And keep going to the next, next one. As Above well. all, lift up the protective shield of faith yes. with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the e evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. Amen. So here you go. Here is your, like when I said, hold up your ID. This, the armor of God is your spiritual identification. This is your ID. Um, so when you put on, and, and the, I have this on the slide, so you'll see this on the screen. It says, when you put on the whole armor of God, you are putting on the identity of Christ. In other words, you don't want to leave home without it. When you leave home without reminding yourself of who you are in Christ, it's like leaving your house naked. And no one wants to see that. <laughs> you don't want to leave home like that. But Jesus alone is your authority. When you come back at the enemy, when the enemy attacks you, you just hand it over to Jesus. It's not like... 
you're a loser, but here is who I am in Christ. It's your union in Christ that gives you the authority. And he is, Jesus Christ, is your righteousness and your peace. And he is your author and he is the finisher of your faith. Not the devil. He can't finish anything that Jesus has started and Jesus wants to complete. So he who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That's Jesus saying that. Not the enemy saying, I'm going to finish you. Always know, know who you are. Always know what you have. So you'll see on, um, on the overhead or on the slides on the screen, it says, he is your savior. I've just said he's your author. He's the finisher of your faith. He's your savior. He is the one who reminds you of the word of God and teaches you the deep meaning of the word of God. So when you're in the word of God, uh, you, you got to say, Lord, help me to see the deeper truth here. Help me to, to know what I need to know so I can stand strong against the attacks of the enemy. Holy Spirit, bring illumination, bring revelation from your word of the truths that I need, of the weapons that I have, and show me how to use them. And then he says, he has the full capacity to defeat the enemy. I'm going to say it again. He has the full capacity. He's not limited in any way to defeat the enemy at every single turn, at every single trick. It says, and he has imparted to you the capacity to defeat the enemy at specific times and places through your prayers. That's why it's so important that we pray. Because if you're not praying, then you're not using your weapons. And I want to show you these. There's two overhead slides and I'm going to move to the, it shows the armor of God that we have, but I'm going to move to the second one, um, which it shows the helmet of salvation. And um, it says the breastplate of righteousness. It's got the belt of truth. It's got the sword of the spirit. It's got the shield of faith and has the feet of peace. It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God. And I just want to know, this morning when you got up, did you put on the full armor of God? Or did you forget the shield of faith? Or, or did you forget that you had the, the sword of the Spirit? Do you, did you forget to put on your helmet? What does a helmet do? It protects your head. I used to teach this. Uh, I had a teaching which I would do with the youth, and I used to always say this, say this, um, put on the helmet of salvation because without your head, you're dead in any battle. Yeah. Without your head, That's true. take off your head, you're dead. So what does the enemy do? He puts, goes for your mind. Yep, goes for your mind, defeats you, discourages you. And so you start looking at, if it's your health, then you start looking at areas where you're not healthy and you let that speak to you and talk to you. You like the enemy, you let the enemy say, oh, this is going to end up in death. This is going to end up, oh, in leprosy. This is going to end up in terrible stuff. And you think the worst. But when you got a helmet of salvation, you think the best. I have a healer. I have one who delivers. I have, I have a helper. And you realize that it's not going to end up in death. It's going to end up in life. He's giving you a life abundant and free. And so when you know what you have, what you know what you've been given, then you know how to pray. So remember the weapons that you have. I'm going to go through them for just a second. Helmet of salvation. And I have, I have these listed here. Number one, uh, another one that we have listed is, is the belt of truth that holds everything in place. I and, think, I thought it was interesting with the band of truth. Uh, yeah. It says, having tightened wide the band of truth. And in the, um, the Amplified, it said, personal integrity and moral mm. courage. When I, when I always thought of dressing in the armor of God, the band of truth as, you know, speaking, speaking truth, but having personal integrity, I think of nowadays when we're tearing down other people yeah. so easily, other Christians even, um, tearing down Christians and dividing ourselves that way and 
not having the, I see so many um, people in leadership having moral failures and yeah. things like that. And, and so the band of truth is your personal integrity and your moral yeah. courage to stand for the truth yeah. when everybody else isn't. And um, that just had a, a different meaning to me than, than I had thought before. And the enemy knows exactly how to hit men and women of God. And there was just a very prominent, um, well-known preacher just just this weekend um, who went down because of moral failure. The, that word is just, Sin. yeah, <laughs> is, is losing. It's just that, that phrase, moral failure, is just uh, losing its power now. It's kind of like, okay, another one. Um, but... Uh, I went on to this pastor's site, and um, he was an Instagram friend of mine, you know, this someone I was a friend with, and um, he literally on Instagram, now the, now the pastor over him, and I'm not going to say any names, the pastor over him is well-known, thousands of people in this church, well-known church, the pastor over him, he did not spell out what the sin was, and so this pastor comes forward, and he says, the head pastor basically was just letting it. You know, if he wants to say it, that's fine. If not, I don't need to expose it. And so he came out on Instagram and said, I failed my wife. I failed my family. And he says, I cheated on my wife. And he said, that's the most important relationship in my life. And I messed up and I'm sorry. And so he's literally like repenting on social media. And I was like, good for him. I was like, he will. He will find healing. He'll find restoration because he's just, a, he's not going to hide it. He's not going to bury it. He could have easily done that, but he came out. And I was, I was like, I was kind of shocked and I was sharing it with some of my friends and um, we were talking about it. But then as I read down through the, th through the thread, I watched Christians just blasting this guy. Here he is exposing something he didn't have to expose and, and just burying his, his soul there on social media, and just, who do you think you are? You're terrible. You know, you're a failure. Just Christians saying this. And as a child of God, I was just like, man, we can't do that to each other. We're going to say, Shh, you failed. Yes, it happens. And, but you just repented. And so let me come and pray for you. Let me tell you, you're going to get through this. Your wife's going to get through it. Your family's going to be healthy. And that, and, and you know, we're just going to pray for you and pray that your family is strengthened and that healing happens and that you too are restored and that you grow closer together. Yes, you failed, but that's not the end of the story. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to not just be praying for ourselves. We got to be praying for each other. Mm -hmm. And when someone messes up, it's not time to like, to, you know, dig the knife in more. It's time to say, yeah, but you can be restored, brother or sister in Christ. Right. And I'm, I'm here to pray you through. We need to pray each other through. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have all these weapons, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness. We could spend a lot of time on these. And I'm just watching our time right now. We need to get to our prayer time. And I don't want to be consuming of our time. But where did you end as far as uh, Scripture? Were you at verse 18? I didn't do that one yet. Okay, do that one. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times. When? when at all times. When? At all times. All times. Morning, noon, night. That's right. Pray continually. On every occasion and in every season, in the spirit, and with this in view, stay alert with mm. all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all of God's people. Man, all God's people. That's got to be our heart. And I guess... I, and I guess I feel this even more uh, when I, after all these times of hearing leaders just uh, falling spiritually, messing up, and, and um, I just have a heart for those, knowing that we can't be the ones who are pushing them down. We've got to be, we got to be praying for them. That's simply it. Mm -hmm. And if you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. You don't need to, you don't need to make them feel worse, but you've got to be praying for each other um, because it exposes a lot of stuff to the world. And then the world begins to say, oh, they're just like everybody else. And you're not. You're, even if you've messed up, you're not like everybody else. You're a child of God. You're special. You're his, his treasure. You're set apart for God and by him. And yeah, there's times where you might get tarnished, but that's not the end of your story. That's not how you are his prized possession.
And if you've ever failed before, if you've ever felt like less than or not valuable, right now I just want to say to you, you are his prized possession. Mm -hmm. It's who you are. And here's how we blow it. Watch this on the overhead. It says this, we put, our, we put on our own armor instead of God's. In other words, we trust in financial security. We trust in our, you know, who we're connected with. We trust in our achievements, our expertise, our, our, our stiff, I put stiff upper lip meaning our toughness. And, and uh, I don't know if you even know what that means, but, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> My, I put on there my big girl pants, you know. Uh, I, I can make it through this and I'll be tougher. And I'll, You know, that's, that's trusting in self. We put on some of God's armor, but we don't put it all on. That's a huge area where many times we fail. And also this, we put on someone else's armor. That's like right. they accomplished it, they did yeah. it. So, so I, can be, I can trust in their strength. Right. So how we, how we blow it is here's a second slide on that. We put on the evil one's armor. In other words, we choose the ways of the evil one for my protection and for my weapons. The evil one focused on attacking because Jesus already brought the victory. I'll say that again. The evil one focuses on attacking because Jesus already brought victory. And then the armor of God is defensive, not offensive. So here's how we blow it. Yeah, a lot of time we do take the, the evil one's armor and we take those attacks and throw them at each other instead of it's lifting ridiculous. each other up. Yeah. And it's like, it's like me punching myself in the face <laughs> thinking that I'm going to win. It's like I'm attacking myself. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, we are one. Right. We're one body. Even when we have differences. Stop attacking each other. Mm -hmm. Even if someone messes up, that doesn't make you any better. Sorry, there's a pet peeve right there. But anyway, um, why we sit first. So here's why we sit before we stand. And so you'll see this on that overhead. It says, I need to sit in the presence of God. So, so first thing you need to do is you sit in the presence of God. I need to sit with the, with the word of God, his word on my heart so I can walk. So I, I live this life so that it's worthy of Jesus, so it overflows in the love and, and good deeds that he has, has already prepared for me to walk in. And I need to sit with the word and I need to sit with prayer so then I can stand when the evil one takes notice of me because the evil one will come against me. So first I sit in God's presence. First I sit with his word. So first I sit in prayer and I persevere and then I'm equipped. I'm ready. I'm reminded of what I have. I'm reminded that I have the, the breastplate of righteousness. I'm reminded that I have the helmet of salvation. I'm reminded that I have the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, the, the feet of peace. I remember I have all these things. And then I am totally prepared, totally ready for the enemy when he comes at me. So here's why I sit first. Here's the next slide. It says, we receive when we rest. I sit when I'm sitting, I'm resting. So I receive, I receive my identity in Christ. I receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Don't try to fight the enemy without the Holy Spirit. You need the Spirit in you, with you, on you, saturating you. And I receive God's strength and I receive God's power and I receive the armor of God. And so here is our winning posture. If you want to win, here is your winning posture. Josie, if you'll read those first ones. Prayer is your offense against the devil's attacks and against his strongholds. You have the power of the Holy Spirit working in you to make certain that you are able to exercise the authority of Christ successfully. Mm. And that's what a lot of people don't use. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they try to do it on their, uh, a lot of us. I mean, I've done it at times. I think we all have, you know, s strong will. I got a strong will. I get through this. And the enemy will kick your butt. <laughs> um, here's our winning posture. You will not fail against the, against the devil if you recognize the real enemy. In other words, a, you're some, a person is not your enemy. Don't get sucked into that. The real enemy. He hates you. Satan hates you. And he knows your weaknesses. And he's coming at you. Be prepared. Put on the armor of Christ. Take on the authority that he alone imparts to you and pray with persevering faith. Persevering faith, the shield of faith. 
to protect you. And go on with the next slide, Jos. None of us have the authority and power to stand against the devil on the basis of our own personality, intellect, or gifts. But in Christ, we have his authority mm. and his power to yes. soundly defeat the enemy, regardless of what he brings against you. Amen. Soundly defeat the enemy. So your winning posture is this. What, what a contrast this is to simply wishing and hoping in prayer that God will act. We don't have to wonder if God's going to act. We know he's going to act. God wants bold and assertive action in prayer. So God wants us to pray as if we are fighting and defeating the most real of all enemies, not only in our personal life, but also on behalf of other believers. And Josie, if you'll hit that last slide. Mm -hmm. If we do not know who our enemy is, then we will fight each other. Boom, right there. Say it one more time. When we do not know who our enemy is, then we will fight each other. And we see that happening all the time right now, we, especially during these election times. Yeah. You need to remind yourself daily this one. Right. Remember who the enemy is. It's not a person. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It's not a political party. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. When we fight people, the enemy wins. When we fight the devil, the Lord wins. That's it right there. So that is a really quick, abbreviated version, the armor of God. Um, stay strong and think of it. What area of your life do you need the armor the most right now? You see, your, your offensive weapon is a sword of the spirit. Everything else is defensive. Mm -hmm. You got the sword. You have the word of God. Have you been opening it daily? Have you been opening it every day and knowing his word and knowing how to use it, knowing how to swing that sword, knowing how to destroy the works of the enemy? Have you been using it? If not, pick up that Bible, start reading it, start proclaiming it, start declaring it and walk in it. Keep your helmet on, because without your head, you're dead. <laughs> Remember what you got. And so um, I'm going to pray for just a second, and then I just ask you, put in your prayer request, your deepest needs, and we're going to start praying for them together. So Lord, we just, Lord, I pray that this lesson, this teaching is simply a reminder. It's a reminder of what you have equipped us with. Lord, that we have weapons that protect us. We have defensive weapons, Lord. And Lord, but we also have a powerful offensive weapon. We have your word. And Lord, I pray that we would hide your word in our hearts. Lord, you said that we hide your word in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Help us to realize that we can't live without your word. And Lord, we only exist because of your word. And so, Lord, help us to be strong in your word that we, so that we will be strong in your might and your power. Help us, Lord, to know that we are clothed in the righteousness of God. Help us to know that we have the gospel, we have the shoes of peace on our feet. And Lord, we, we put on that helmet of salvation. And Lord, we, we put on the belt of truth, Lord. And Lord, we will not loosen that. We'll keep it tight. And Lord, we hold up the shield of faith. And so Lord, I pray your, your hand to be upon your people. Right now, whatever piece of armor that we need right now, Lord, may we just say, God, I'm grabbing hold of that helmet, which I forgive me for taking it off. Lord, forgive me for putting down the breastplate of righteousness. Lord, forgive me for, for take, taking off the belt of truth or, or Lord, the shield of faith or the feet that are clothed with the gospel of peace. Lord, forgive me for that. But Lord, I, pray, I put them back on. I take them. And Lord, I'll take the sword of the spirit and I'll destroy the works of the enemy. So Lord, right now, empower your people. Help us to realize what we have. And Lord, may we use the weapons that you gave us. Lord, may we not forget our identity in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so who do we have there who needs prayer? Your mom is praying for Debbie, mm. that the Lord will heal, heal her, and she'll be able to continue to take her antibiotics and diuretic uh, without becoming allergic to them. Amen. Um, Lord, we pray for my sister Debbie, Lord, and uh, for those who don't know, her legs are very swollen, and she had um, taken, she'd gone to the doctor, and um, I actually forget the name of the drug, but it was uh, one that's, um, supposed to help her knees, cortisone, cortisone shot, and she's allergic to it, and it's caused a lot of swelling. So we come against all the um, 
areas of swelling. We come against uh, the reaction to the, the medication that she was given. And Lord, I pray that her allergic reaction would, would wear off. And Lord, I pray that her swelling would go down. And I pray, Lord, that um, you would give the doctors wisdom, discernment, but at the same time, Lord, that you heal her body help the doctors know what to give her, and I pray that her body would accept whatever they give her. And so, Lord, touch her, do a miracle in her physical body right now in the name of Jesus. Bobby Nelson uh, says, pray for our youth and young adults mm. to know and live in truth that only comes from Christ. Yes, Lord, we agree with her in the name of Jesus. That they would know who they are in Christ. They would know what they have in Christ. They wouldn't believe the lies of the enemy, Lord, they wouldn't be deceived, and Lord, they wouldn't be tricked, but Lord, they'd be powerful and strong in, in, in all that you have made available to them, and so may they be bold leaders, and Lord, may they be filled with your spirit, empowered by your presence, and Lord, may there be revival amongst our young people, may there be revival this day in the, in the body of Christ, Lord. Jesus' name. And there's a request that um, says that we will represent Christ to all we meet and radiate our new identity in Him with bold humility. Mm, I'll give that one to so, you. So, Lord God, we just pray for for our testimony that it would radiate who we are in You to those that do not have You, God. Mm. That we would be bold um, and that we would be humble as well especially during these times of different opinions, God. I pray yes, that, that we would be humble and that we would respect each other mm. as human beings, God. And I just pray that, um, that our light would shine yes, as sir. followers of you. Yes, sir. That because of the way that we react In the name of Jesus. to decisions that are being made or to mm. things that are happening in our world as Christians, the way that we react would draw others to you, God, and that you would get the glory for it. Mm. But I just noticed on here, um, Annie just said the matchless name of Jesus. And uh, I just want to say that in God's word, it says the name of Jesus, there's going to be a day where every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. And so, Lord, right now, we don't wait to the end. Lord, we right now, we take advantage of what the time that we have right now and Lord, I pray that you would rule and reign in our lives. Each person who's watching, Lord, any area in their life where we have not given you supreme authority, supreme rule, supreme ownership of our lives, Lord, we kick the enemy out. And Lord, we allow you to have full, complete ownership within our lives. So you are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. And Lord, we repent of our sin. We repent of our um, mindsets that have been against your will and your way. And Lord, may we be about the gospel of peace. May we bring in peace into areas of conflict, areas of turmoil, areas of division, mm -hmm. even in areas of division in the brothers and sisters in Christ. And Lord, we bring in the gospel of peace. And so Lord, may we be known as those who are peacemakers. In the name of Jesus. On well, my um, personal page, I had put up a um, GoFundMe a mm. thing that a friend of mine had set up. Um, they are house parents in the children's home that I work at, and they um, just had a, a little baby boy at, what was it, 22 weeks gestation? Yeah. Um, it's very premature. He's only like two pounds and a couple ounces. Um, he's doing well, but... Um, if you could pray for Patrick and Jenna, their names is, and baby Arden, mm. and uh, just keep them in prayer, Lord God. We, we know that you have knitted him in her womb, yes, Lord so God, that you, that you knew, you know every mm. hair on his head that he's going to have for his whole life, God, and you know the plans that you have formed for him, the mm. plans that yes, you have Lord. created for him and who in he's going Jesus. to be as he gets older, God, and we just pray that you would breathe your life into him, that you would strengthen his lungs, that you would finish forming every part of his body, God, and that mm. he, would, he would grow strong in that hospital, Lord, yes, and that Lord. he would be released quickly. Amen. We pray for Jenna that you would continue to heal her from a delivery, Lord, and just strengthen that family right now as they're having financial 
problems because of being out of work with all this, God. And we just pray that you would bless them, that you would bless others to bless them, God. Yes, so thank Lord. you for that. Hmm. I'm just going to pray right now for the church. Not just my church, but the church. You are the church if you're watching this. Mm -hmm. That we would be strong in the Lord. That we would know who our enemy is. We would also know who our enemy is not. And I, I just want to say this. If, if you're so tied in right now with whatever your political party is, that you make the opposing political party the enemy, then you are missing an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with that person. Mm -hmm. There are bigger things going on right now. And I believe God wants to sweep through this nation with revival. If his people's if my people who are called by my name, the Lord says, will humble themselves, if we will turn from our wicked ways and seek his face, then he will come in, then he will restore, then he'll heal the land. But first it begins with, if my people, he says. And so right now, remember that in front of us is an, um, an opportunity for the Spirit of God to move, for revival to happen. But first, we got to have spiritual eyes to see what the real battle is. And then we got to take up the weapons and use them against the enemy, not people. Mm -hmm. And then realize that God is on the move. He wants to do something big right now and in this moment. So wait on him. Dwell, it's, it's in your union with him that you have your identity in him and your power and your authority. So right now in the body of Christ, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for each person that's watching, for each person that, that's watching this right now, Lord, Lord, we, we put on the whole armor of God. We remember who we are. So our mind of Christ says, we put on the helmet of salvation, that we are covered in the blood of Jesus, that we are children of God. We are forgiven. We are redeemed. We are whole. We're not broken. Lord, we are whole in you. And we put on the breastplate of righteousness. We are, you have declared that we are in right standing before God because of the powerful work of Jesus on the cross. And so, Lord, we put on that breastplate of righteousness. And around our, our, our waist, we put on the belt of truth. And Lord, we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, so that we know who we are at all times. And we hold up the shield of faith, Lord, because without faith, we, we don't have anything, Lord. So we hold up the shield of faith against the attacks of the enemy. And we put on the peace on our feet, the gospel of peace on our feet as we take your word, as we take your message, as we, we don't head out with the message of division, we come out with a message of peace. We come out with a message of salvation. We, we come out as the rescuers into a world that is hurting and angry and bitter against each other. We have such a message, Lord. Help us not to give away, hand over our message to the enemy and get involved in, in matters of division. Lord, we, we just speak the word. We speak life. We speak freedom. For all those who are trapped and in bondage and bitter, Lord, we speak freedom. We speak, we speak victory in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. So, Lord, I pray that you would start in us, the church. You would start in us first. Bring about revival, God. May we care about lost souls. May we care about those who their life currently right now is headed to hell, eternal separation from God. May that matter more to us, Lord, about where somebody's headed for eternity. May that, may that weigh on us, Lord. May we be about the business of rescuing the lost. 
And so, Lord, on each person's heart right now, put on our hearts, Lord, the names of those who we are in close relationship with who need Jesus. And, Lord, we begin to pray for them. And I encourage you right now, put down the names of friends, names of people, names of relatives that you know who do not know Jesus. Bring them out before the Lord and rescue. Call out their name and say, Jesus, please save their soul. Help us not to forget what our job is, which with bringing the gospel of peace. So Lord, rescue the lost in the name of Jesus. Do we have any more there? No. List there. So I just encourage you to make a list. And that um, I used to say this. I used to, sounds bad, but I used to say, make your hit list. Your hit list is your top five people who, who have a relationship with you that you can speak the word of God into their life and and or that you could pray for them to come to know the Lord. And make your hit list, and I encourage you to hold up that list each day before the Lord and hold up their names and call on the name of the Lord that spiritually they wouldn't die without knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior, that they would give their life to Jesus. And so save them from the attacks of the enemy. Save them from spiritual blindness and darkness and pray that light would come. And you might be the, you, your prayers may make the difference of eternity for somebody. But every day pray for them. Every day bring them up before the Lord. Every day call on their name, bind the works of the enemy and loose them to be saved Bring them into relationship with Jesus. And so, Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you for this time of being able to focus on the, the armor of God and, and what we are equipped with. And I pray that you would strengthen, Lord, as we hold up the shield of faith. Lord, I pray you'd build the faith in your people. Encourage your people. Lord, may we not be overwhelmed with the darkness but Lord right now flood us with your light and may our light shine in a dark world and may our light bring about the revelation of Jesus Christ in the world around us thank you Lord for equipping us thank you Lord for not leaving us empty handed thank you for the weapons that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. And I pray if you have opportunity this weekend, join us. Um, if, if you've been engaged as far as our um, Kiss the Pig event that's going to be happening, um, I just got um, a real quick um, message that just simply said, it is a message from the Lord, I believe. And it said, vote for Pastor Bob. And he needs to retain his title. And so I just want to encourage you to do that. And um, I think Pastor Bob said, you, you if need you to would... pick on somebody else. That one's not working for you. <laughs> I know, but I'm thinking, it keeps... I, I, I thought of this today. I said, I for think... Richard or something. <laughs> I think if Pastor Bob wins, I think he said that he would hold... A worship, an all-night worship service for, for those that voted for him. Nice. And so it's a special treat. So if you want, if you want a special straws. night of worship, just Bob and the worship team, Pastor Bob and the worship team, then I think you'll want to vote for him and really uh, load, up, load up his bucket um, and uh, with, with hundreds how, much, how many more weeks do they have? When is Okay, this? so anyway, that's what I meant to say. I got distracted. Yeah. It's, we were going to do it this weekend, right? but we're giving you one more week. So okay. it's not this weekend, but the following... Because your bucket's too full, so you're getting one more Sunday, week to try to get somebody else to kiss this pig. And I'm just praying <laughs> that somebody gets to have that night of worship and invite <laughs> their best friends and 
<laughs> to this personal night of worship. Anyway, kiss the pig. Um, give towards it. It's money goes towards the youth. And if you're wondering what it's about, it means the winner, the person has the most money in their bucket, the pastors, Pastor Terry, Pastor Bob, um, uh, Pastor Frank, you're not allowed to put money in his bucket. And um, you. And no, and Richard. Oh, and Richard. Okay. Richard. And uh, so um, that's the buckets you can put money in. And uh, all, the but money. all the money just goes towards the youth for their winter retreat. That's, right. that's what it's all about. And uh, we want to encourage you to give. You can give online as well. Go to our website. In the notes section of where you give, just say, kiss the pig. Put any other name except for mine. Because if you use my name, it'll be like um, canceled out right away. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> so uh, God bless you. Uh, anyway, it'll be not this weekend, the following weekend. Um, but um, God bless you. And I pray that you, every day, you remember the armor of God that you have and that you stay equipped and know who you are, know what you have, and be strong in the Lord. God bless you. Have a great week. Good night.